Oh, it's magic. Wonderful. Um, yeah, the editing I'm still trying to get used to, but I have to like zoom in and then look at the video and then just move it over a little bit to match them up. But this has been working pretty well for me. There you go. There you go. <laughs> All right. Um, so welcome to the podcast. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, so kind of to start off where everybody else does, uh, what was as far as childhood goes until like middle school, what kind of activities were you in? Doesn't necessarily have to be in sports, but if it is, that's okay as well. Um, my mom had me horseback riding starting at age two. Wow. So I was very active with animals from a super young age. Um, I was competitive at it until I was like 13 or so. Uh, and at the same time, other activities, I, I um, did a lot of arts and crafts, a lot of mm -hmm. painting, a lot of artsy, outdoor naturey stuff. We would like yeah. build things in the woods. I had a very like mystical like woodland fairy yeah. <laughs> yeah so as as far as being on a horse at two how does how does that work out i've seen kids on skis at two but the skis aren't a couple hundred pound animals yeah um i mean well my mom had me on ponies so okay it's not still a big animal to put your kid on but yeah uh, I mean, my mom was just such a believer in animal like just getting to know animals and that they're not as scary as you know people think they are and i, I <laughs> At a really young age, like I learned how to, um, I don't know, like get along with animals. And I, at right. my age four, age five, I had, I was able to ride a horse all by myself. And you kind of learn how to like vibe with the horse. You can yeah. kind of just like talk to each other a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what what is it like uh, vibing with the horse, or what <laughs> what's the connection that you? Because I I think I've ridden two or three horses and there is definitely no vibing going on. It was not a comfortable experience. I was just happy that he didn't start running a lot, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, okay, so I was kind of taught, you actually like a proper horseback riding, whatever, you don't need to hold reins. You should actually be able to, using the muscles in your legs yeah. and your posture and your intention should be actually enough to tell the horse where you want the horse to go. Okay. And I kind of started to learn that as I got older. I'm sure that has like a big impact, honestly, uh, on the human I am today. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I don't know. We, we, I'm very like spiritual. Like there's energy being exchanged all the time. And I think if you get on a horse and you're sitting there going like, holy crap, I'm going to die. Screw this animal. What the F? Like, I believe the horse can act like can feel you being yeah. like that as opposed to getting on the horse and being calm and being like, you know, hey, hey, buddy, like, how are you? You know, like, let's do this. Please don't kick me off of you. Yeah. <laughs> so um did you guys have horses did you have a farm near you what was the scenario that you had going on yes i i lived on a farm and um, we didn't like sell any products in town though so i can't really say that i lived on a I, like but i did so we had a farm yeah we had a barn. For, for most people they would call it a farm but selling yeah. i guess is a different term for it yeah. yeah so we we had a couple horses a couple ponies ducks chickens cats sheep i mean all of it um and at a young age, you know, my mom would teach us, you rise with the sun, you feed these animals before you feed yourself. That's just farm life and, you know, get over it type of thing. Wow. So was it fun, enjoyable? What was, did, was it always hard to feed them first or that just became what the, what it was? Yeah, it, it became like habitual. I mean, I'm sure when I was little, I threw tantrums and probably all the time was like, but mom, feed me, I'm hungry. And my yeah. mom's like commitment to like, no, we do like the duty first and then we will eat breakfast. I'm, I, it became like my form of thinking almost, I think. Um, yeah. And I think it was good for us to like not be selfish adults, right? Mm -hmm. Because it wasn't all about me actually. Yeah. So, and I learned that young, yeah. Yeah. So it would it be safe to say you probably don't get hangry too often or does that still happen? <laughs> oh no, I get hangry all the time. Okay, wonderful. Good yeah, to know. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not going to force my kids to live on a farm then just to no, get no, that yeah. ability. No. Um, no, so then uh, right <laughs> as far as like the woodland stuff and being there, um, you said you were building stuff. What were you building? Did you have an ax? Like what, what did that look like? So my mom ran, um, have you ever heard of 4-H? Yeah. Like yeah, it's like a nature-y Girl Scout, but it's like boys and girls. Yeah. Um, she ran a little group. I don't even know what it was called. And it would be at my house. So then we would go into the woods and we'd do these different things, like go find a rock that, and, you know, paint on the rock. 
or we used logs to like make a little fort in the woods almost that we would mm -hmm. have to walk to and we would all like help build this fort yeah. and it was very like nature centered um very like your all of your entertainment can come out of nature you don't need to have a phone in your face kind yeah. of mentality for sure um so what what did what did the day look like um so you're feeding the animals then you have breakfast and then what was what was kind of your days after, after that point uh at which age like at four or at like 10. uh we'll go 10. um yeah i mean wake up help out with the animals eat breakfast go to school you mm. know um and then come home so my mom um, always ran small businesses so luckily okay. she would be home so we we could go home we didn't have to like go to after school programs yeah um she would be waiting and we would get home and then I, yeah i would do my homework and another big influence i would watch my mom run her businesses answer her phone calls you know i would you know slowly listen to what is she saying to these people yeah. on the phone she had a hand painted sweatshirt business so i come home and watch her painting the sweatshirts um i would kind of get involved a little bit yeah hand painting sweater so that would so we'll just say this is a sweater what was she painting it on with like not acrylics i don't even know if that's the right term um no she had a special uh like water-based fabric paint that okay. meant for it yeah and she would use like sponge brushes i can still like see her doing it she would do um like flowers like winnie the pooh i mean people loved it at all the very crushes. cool so yeah. How, how did she market it back then? Obviously, since a lot of social medias probably weren't as big back then, what was her, her marketing? I, I guess it was just um, building a name for herself. She went to every single craft fair. I would okay. say probably within like 500 miles of Albany. And yeah. then people would count on her to be there the next year. And then the next year, wow. um, so just kind of be, I think her marketing tactic was just like traveling a lot with it. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so then were you told that you had to be home by a certain time if you're out playing? What was your kind of schedule? Was it strict or was it just, hey, got to be home by dinner? Yeah, my, my mom was funny because she was lenient and then yet strict at the same time. So she really never told my sister and I we couldn't do anything we wanted to do. Like if I yeah. was passionate about this, she'd say have fun. But she was strict by you will be in bed by like 9 p.m. and that's that and I don't want to hear it. So. Ooh. So we we can we could go frolic and do literally whatever we wanted. Yeah. We wanted, but she was very strict on you will be home on a school night by this time. And that's okay. the thing I am not, you know, budging on. Yeah. Yeah. So school nights, did you ever test it? And what happened if you did? Um, I don't think I ever did because my mom kind of terrified me a little bit. And she yeah. does in a way, she's like my best friend now, but she has like a little scary streak to her. So yeah. I really want to push it. Just enough. <laughs> there was just enough there that yeah. I was like, okay, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, so as far as eating habits went, uh, was it home cooked meals? Were you picky? Did you even have a choice to be picky? Uh, what did that look like for you? Oh yeah, no, my, my parents did not allow us to be picky and I'm actually so grateful for that today because the yeah. people my age who were like, I wouldn't want to eat sushi. I'm like, you just look so dumb right now. But <laughs> no, um, I have memories at like age five of when I didn't want to eat my tomatoes or something and they did the whole, no, you're literally not getting up till you eat that. I never was like, oh, can I eat something else tonight? My mom would be like, no, so this is dinner. Cause I knew I would go to some of my friends' homes and they'd be like, I don't want this mom. And their, and their mom would be like, well, do you want me to cook you the pizza instead? And I'm like, yeah. oh my gosh, lucky you. But I, I see, you know, grown up, that, that probably wasn't the best thing they could have done for their kid. Yeah. Um, no, my, my parents forced us, yeah, to eat a lot of different things. But I would say, I mean, I still had a mix. Like, there was still a lot of, like, processed food going on and stuff. We weren't just, like, eating all organic food either. It was right. like a mix. Yeah. So was it, um, was the topic of food ever talked about as far as, like, oh, have a healthy relationship with food or, hey, this is good food versus bad food, or it was, everyone was just pretty much eating to satiety. Um, yeah, we, we never really talked about food. I, I would say if anything, fitness was much more talked about in my family. It was okay. like really a big part of both of my parents. Like what they didn't say to us, like, you need to be fit or like no one like yeah. thrust it on us, but watching yeah. both of them, um, fitness was like talked about a lot. So it yeah. was less concerned with the food as far as like being overweight because everyone was always like working out or moving. And yeah, it's tough yeah. when you're doing all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. what did you see as far as fitness from them? Um, did they have a certain workout program or is just working on the farm or what, what did they have going on? 
Yeah, like, I mean, my, I'd see my mom get up at 5 a.m. and not stop moving until the end of the day. She'd be working out in the backyard. She'd be going line dancing. Like, she used to, I think, way back when, do some bodybuilding stuff. Like, it was just, I just saw a fit woman. And my father was obsessed with fitness. Like, yeah. was so built, like, all the time. Like, he would go to the gym for three hours a day. Like, okay. every single day. He was, like, a track star. Um, they both met at like Cortland and, you know, bonded over their love of sports and fitness mm -hmm. and stuff. So fitness was always like a very big part of our family. Yeah. yeah. So did you ever lift with your dad at the gym? What was your kind of fitness, I guess, growing up? Um, I never went to the gym, but I, so when I stopped horseback riding at 12, I got very involved in soccer, like was obsessed with it yep. and played competitively for 10 years. I loved it. Wow. And he was so into soccer with me, yeah. like on the weekends when some kids would be, I don't know, like eating pizza, he'd be like, let's go to the soccer board and make sure you get your left. You know, he got very like into soccer with me. Yeah. Um, so like that just became like my whole life was like soccer, soccer plus school. But like I yeah. was <laughs> my sister yeah. was more into running. So, yeah, she would go. She started going to the gym with him when she was like 16 nice. and he would help her with uh, her form. Yeah. And, both of them, since they had lifted competitively in the past, had all these random friends who at times would be like, hey, come to my gym with me. I'll show you a few things. Like, it's yeah. Just, yeah. So when I when I imagine farm, like, I, well, I, I guess they are a fair amount close to us, but I imagine like 20, 30, 40 miles away from everything. But it sounds like you were pretty close to a lot of stuff. Yeah, I mean, I was in like a suburb, not even suburb, like rural suburb okay. of Albany. So we were still 15, 20 minutes away from anything. Wonderful. But it was still the country though. Like, yeah. don't, I mean, we were still out there, but yeah. not, you know, not well, cause, there. cause I know like for soccer, like in general, like I had to travel a lot and like, I was, I was in it. Like I was around everybody, but still yeah. practice and games and stuff were pretty far. Did you have to travel a fair amount to play soccer um, for that long? Oh yeah. I, my dad put a lot of miles on his car for sure. Yeah. No, yeah. We, we had to do one to two hour drives a lot for, um, games. I mean, I went to a small high school, like I'm, I'm not Mia Ham. Like we were, we were, uh, what's it like C division, okay. you know, not a, an A or anything. Yeah. Um, but I still, I mean, I had fun with it. I, I, I thought I was decent at it. Yeah. <laughs> so when, when you started playing, um when did you find out like hey yeah this is this is it this is what I'm in for <laughs> um I so I started later than most kids most mm -hmm. girls um which I thought would be a disadvantage to me I got started in like sixth seventh grade a bunch of the girls had already been playing for five ten years even yeah. and yeah my first year I didn't really know what the heck I was doing I was on like the modified team and then by the second year like I I have a very intense competitive personality type probably very obvious by like my news articles and stuff <laughs> so I was yeah. like okay I'm gonna I'm determined to be the best at this so I would practice in the off season I played in uh indoor soccer I played in the springtime my dad would be training me on the weekends so then by the yeah. next year when I showed up they were like oh, okay hang on a second and then that year they put me on varsity and skipped like JV that's um, fantastic and then that's when I was like okay, I must be okay at this because yeah. they just did that for me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's when I realized like I could be decent at this. Right. Well, and it, like for myself, I was one of those kids that I played for a long time growing up, but I never did. I, I, I went to practices, like I went to the camps, I played in the games, so on and so forth. But if I was putting in maybe like a half an hour a day, like putting in some more effort and like skill-based stuff and all those things probably would have went a lot better. My yeah. parents were just happy I was playing, but like, as far as still skill goes, like if you're putting in that extra effort, like it definitely pays off, even if you haven't played for five or six years on some of those people. Oh, yeah. um, so as far as school went, um, was it, was school just something you're happy to do and then focus on soccer or what was kind of the balance there? Um, no, I would, I mean, I definitely was like a nerd with my, I love learning. I yeah. love I love writing. Um, so I would say I loved school and was just as competitive at that. Like, I mean, I was just like a lot, like people probably thought I was a lot, but um, <laughs> no, I, I took school very seriously too. So yeah. it, it was like, all of it was just, mm -hmm. I, I got to college and I was like, I need to like to go into retirement. Right. I was like, so burnt out from the pace. I yeah. Had left. yeah. I like relaxed in college a little bit. Yeah. So what, what was the pace in high school? Was it because 
you just love learning so much? Was it because you're like, oh, I want to get A's? Do you still remember the stuff that you learned or was it more so for grades? I would say all of it. I mean, I do remember actually a lot of it still. I had a lot of really amazing teachers too, like since I went to a small. Yeah, school, that's I, nice. Yeah, it was small, but I, I really probably got a private level like attention from these people because it was small. So yeah. that was nice. But um, yeah, no, I was comp I was competitive in, in getting, you know, the best grades, classic, yeah. but I also was obsessed with learning. Um, I, I had thought at the time, like, oh, I want to go to an Ivy League. I want to go to Cornell. Like, all of that mattered to me. Wow. <laughs> and um, it was funny because it actually came down to my final year. Uh, my guidance counselor convinced me to go to a state school instead. And she was like, just- Why did she do that? She Because of the, the student debt. Yeah. And I actually, and I, <laughs> no, you know what? Like, no judgment. I don't care where anyone went to college, but I actually am so happy that she told me that because I came yeah. out of college with, with very little debt that was gone by the oh, time. It was that's late. phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. My, my wife went to a uh, community college for two years and then went to Columbia because there's only two programs that teach um, American sign language. So mm -hmm. when she left uh, that wonderful school with a hundred thousand dollars in loans. Exactly. And honestly, <laughs> I, and that's, ter I mean, that's terrible, but no, yeah. I, I think, I think I could only have been as successful as I have been as a freelancer, as a business owner today, because I wasn't paying off debt. I, I think oh, that, absolutely. I think that sets a lot of people back when it, it's not their skills or their brain or anything. It's the debt they have. Yeah. So when you were um, going to college, what was the look? What was the drive? Like what was kind of pushing you into uh, that school? Was it for business? What was uh, your major that you're looking for? Um, I went to school for political science. My, okay. I, because I, I didn't actually know what I wanted, and she was like, "Well, you you love reading, you love writing, and you, you know, I was always involved in student government. I was like the high school president. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in some. Oh, oh, oh. I'm the worst. I'm the worst just, human. Like, I'm terrible. Just glossing over that. So, so it's so uh, annoying. <laughs> so, small story. I think I ran for class president in fourth grade, and I lost by one vote. Oh. And I went and looked at my desk and I didn't turn my boat in. <laughs> that was the last time I ever ran for anything. <laughs> oh, that might have been like a sign from God that like, no. <laughs> well, the only thing that president got to do was pick sports for the class at recess. I'm like, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> like that, yeah. that would have been perfect. But oh, I guess man. it just wasn't meant to be. So what that was hurt. it like? <laughs> what was it like running for class president? Or not, um, but so was it for school president or whatever the? Yeah, so I was active in class. To, I for like basically every year from sixth grade, I was either the president, the VP, secretary, whatever. I I rotated it like because I yeah. just always liked that stuff, and I I cared. That was always you know a lot of people care now, but I remember when we were fourteen, they're like, oh screw this stupid place, can't wait yeah. to get the f out of here, and I'm like, all right, I, I hear you, but like we're here now so I'm yeah. gonna find but you, you could you could actually make change and I bet that was pretty cool yeah and I yeah no definitely it wasn't until so my senior year I ran for high school president of like okay high school. and um yeah it was funny I put like my sister and everyone on the board I like just probably annoyed everyone but um no I mean I I had always been interested in yeah. politics I guess and the study of people and allocation of resources so my guidance counselor was like all right you like politics, you like history, you like English, you should go into political science. I didn't even know what it meant at the time. And I was like, yeah. yeah right. So I got there, started taking some poli sci classes and I was like, okay, she was right again. I do enjoy this. <laughs> yeah. So that was my major. Yeah. Very cool. Um, was there anybody uh, through your life getting to high school and college that was someone like, hey, I want to be like, or this person's pushing me or was it like someone that you looked up to or um, anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I don't know, whenever people ask me that, I guess not really. I mean, I always thought, I still think like so highly of my mom. I always definitely wanted, to emulate, wanted to emulate her in some way. But even at the time, I still did not consider myself someone who was going to be an entrepreneur. I thought I would be a chief of staff, maybe like, mm -hmm. I don't know. It didn't, I didn't think that I would also be an entrepreneur. Yeah. And it's so funny because it like found me. Yeah. It, 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 it came anyway. Mm -hmm. So, so we're in school, we're taking poli sci, 
Uh, were you playing soccer at college as well? Or what was your sports or fitness like at that point? Yeah, so I was not on the college like professional team. I, I didn't even try, but I don't think I would have been. So no, I did yeah. like club club and intramural stuff. Yeah. And then three years later, I when I moved back to Albany to take a job there, um, I started playing in like professional women's leagues with women like 21 to 40. And it was actually so fun and I loved it so much. <laughs> That's super cool. So and, and when you're in college, what was kind of the development of um, kind of your schooling and your thought process? And then also, um, I'll ask that question after you. <laughs> um, college, I allowed myself to like slow down a little bit. And for the first time in my life, like party and like, not be whatever I thought yeah. I was, you know? So I feel like college was a time I like really opened up my mindset and like explored like all different kinds of thought processes of things I might like to do. I really let myself like just get out there with everything so that by the time I graduated, I have, I feel like my mindset was like ready to be like fixed then. Yeah. That so yeah. yeah, yeah. when you started getting closer towards, so I know the last two years are more kind of specific what were those classes that you were excited to have? What were some of the things that you were like, hey, this is really kind of what I'm getting into? Or, or was it just, I'm gonna get my piece of paper? Uh, I, uh, what were my favorite like poli-sci classes you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I discovered along the way that I absolutely love philosophy. I didn't mm -hmm. know that. So my, I had to take a political philosophy class and it just sounded to me like, ugh. I, I don't know why it did and then I finally, I finally took that class and like on the first day when we were like actually reading like Socrates and Aristotle and stuff I was like oh my gosh I love this I yeah. really have some part of me loves mindset mm. um like I could I just knew like that something clicked in my head with that like yeah which, yeah very cool uh have you listened to the podcast uh philosophize this so I'm so bad. I don't listen to podcasts because I'm not like an or like I don't listen through my ears. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I really want to start getting into it though. Like I read all day long, so I read like podcast descriptions instead. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like a weirdo, but yeah. no, I, I should check that one out. Hey, it's alright. We'll 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 put this on YouTube, so it'll be, you can you can see it there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so then when you're uh, graduating, uh, what are things looking like from there? Um, so when I graduated, I had already had a job. Line. I graduated a year early, so okay. I one, and I had a job. How, many, how, well, how many class hours were you taking? Or I, my hours? major wasn't that. So, okay, so I got lucky because my high school let us take so many AP classes that I got college credit for them. So by Wonderful. the time I got to Geneseo, I already had shaved an entire year off from all the APs that I'd taken. Well, that's not uh, bad. Not, not at all. But, and that's why I want to go to, wanted to go to a state school because a lot of private schools didn't recognize those credits still, but the state schools okay. did. Okay. Yeah. Um, and okay. So I graduated a year early. Oh, I was going to interrupt you again. What, yeah. what did eating look like in college since you weren't at home? Um, were you cooking for uh, yourself? Were you meal prepping? What, oh, from that look, it sounds like it was wonderful. It was not good. No, no. The eating at college was absolutely atrocious because I was like hung over literally every other day. So um, no, I was not the epitome of health while I was at college whatsoever. I didn't start getting conscious about what I was eating until I'd say the last four years. Okay. Um, 23, yeah, I would say is when I started to like actually care about what I was eating. <laughs> yeah. So it was the the typical just eating in the cafeteria or Taco Bell or just anything. Yeah, it, just anything. And like, honestly, I was so, I don't know, the, like starved for like partying and being yeah. all that. Like, I didn't even care about food, if that sounds weird. If, if, yeah. if it's like a party, I would like do that over eat. I don't know. That doesn't sound normal, but like, you know what I mean? Like, it, right. was, it was just like. You're in it limbo yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so yep so we're graduating a year early what are what are prospects what what's going on there so i had um done a bunch of political internships at college i think i did four of them and one of them that i did in albany um they had when i completed the internship they said you know we would hire you in an instant if you ever want to come back here so, I was so like, what, you know, what, what would what would they hire you as like what was what was the job um i started out in 
the corresponding department, it was called, and I would help respond to constituent letters people were sending in complaining about whatever's going on in their district. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I started there, but then was, was I, there any was there any good complaints? Was there anything um, that you <laughs> it was just like it, it was so easy, honestly, that I was like, all right, I need to like move up here. Yeah. Um, so I worked a campaign the second I started this new job to kind of like, here we go again, like prove myself, you know, getting very competitive yeah. and it paid off. Cause like two months later, they promoted me to press coordinator, which is what I wanted to do. Writing press releases, you know, like taking, you know, walking around with candidates, getting way more involved. Um, and I really liked it for a bit, but then I felt not challenged again. And so what, what did, what did the first campaign look like? Was it, um, I guess, what office were they running for? Was it competitive? Like what was everything kind of around? Yeah. That? So the, so the candidate, he was running for a some New York state assembly, very like okay. little type of, you know, not anything like huge. Um, yeah. I did the whole campaign with him, which I was like, so scarred by that. I was like, I'm never running campaigns again. Cause you literally don't sleep from July to November. They just like, forget living, like just forget it. Um, so I was like, okay, this was a little much for me. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I kept working as a press coordinator. And then after I had done one year at this job, so I'm 22 now I was bored. Um, it was tough cause I loved the people I worked with. I love my mm. bosses. I still talk to them every day. They were amazing people, but I just knew like I had to keep going, you know? Yeah. So, so for someone that's not in the world of uh, politics, I guess, is running a campaign super hard. Like a lot of the politics I see around here, it's like the same people running, it's the same people getting into office. I see a couple of people put up signs and there's a lot of people walking around and shaking hands. Um, but what was some things that you did that you saw like success in, or is it pretty much, is, is everyone doing the same thing or why, I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, campaigns are, are tough. They're like mind games almost. It's like, how many doors can you knock? Like, how, how much can you do without breaking? Because right. the more you get yourself out there in front of people, the more likely they will go and vote for you. So it's like, you know, it, it's, it's a game of like, how far can you push yourself? And, yeah. And I just remember being like, okay, I don't enjoy like being a staffer on this. If this is ever me one day running, of course I won't mind not sleeping June yeah. or November. But right. doing it for someone else, I was like, okay, I don't know about this. So, so you're you're not really changing too many people's minds. You're saying, hey, I'm going to have around forty some percent of the vote. But if I actually get them all out to actually vote for me, then I have a better chance of running. Like, how do you pick where to go? Yeah, I mean, I so. Being only 21, I was obviously working with higher up people who were making yeah. more of these decisions than I was, but it would all be based on the data. They would get the breakdown of every Democrat. I mean, the amount of information people have on other people is just like scary. Yeah. Thank you, Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Oh my God. No, they would know like, okay, guys in this pocket, you know, these people voted this way for this judge in this year, which means they might feel like they would make the calls on the data and then tell us right. on the ground, you know, like what to go do about it. Um, so, but, so, so a majority of the campaigns are just run off of data on who you can swing just a little bit, not just yeah. if they're, if they're on the other side, you know, you're not going to get them, but it's just making sure that small group of people that you can swing over. That's all, that, that's all it is. And then also making sure your candidate doesn't totally screw up so bad and say the most offensive thing ever that they shouldn't say to people. Like, it's just, yeah. I, like, I was like, I think there's just better things I can do with my time, like yeah. more impacts I can make in other ways. As, as, as far as corruption goes, because if you're from Illinois, you're just, you know, it's there, but you don't. So um, as far as like a lot of unions went, we understood that it was run by the mob for a while um whatnot and they were taking money out of the union so on and so forth obviously paying politicians and stuff like that did you ever see anything um or hear of any stuff like that going on uh or was that even was it so low that it didn't matter yeah i mean i mean i i lost a little faith because there was yeah there was corruption on both sides uh all the time so i was just like this is just i don't know what i'm doing yeah so like so right what, what 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 does the corruption look like say I'm going to um, donate $10,000 and like I have your ear or what is, what does that look like? I, I mean, I, I don't even know if I can really say, I guess what I saw. <laughs> um, 
Uh, I mean, I unfortunately witnessed um, sexual inappropriateness that was illegal based on people who were already on the payroll. That sh it, it was just like so. so I, I can't to, really say more. <laughs> right, right, right. So, yeah. um, not necessarily uh, for gain of financial gain. It was more yeah. just yeah. power. Yeah, I didn't see any financial stuff. I saw a yeah. lot of um, inappropriate behaviors. Yeah. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. No, yeah. No, I mean, you, you see that. And that is in the majority of industries. So it's definitely yeah. not, not enjoyable. No, um, and I was like, I'm wasting my time right now. You know, yeah. like, this is what, what am I doing? Like, yeah. yeah. All right. So we're, we're moving past politics. We want, we hear sleep is a good thing. Um, we want to find out more about that. Uh, so what was next for you? Um, all right. So after a year of being there, I had decided that I wanted to move to New York City. Mm -hmm. um, Albany is only two hours away. And I was so like, what, what brought you, what, what, what kind of pulled you into New York? You know, I, I think I just like decided it one day and like, I'm so, like, I was stubborn about it. I was like, cause I, I realized like Albany was not never going to challenge me the way I needed to be. Yeah. And I came to that conclusion at only 21. So like, you know, I, I was like, okay, where can I go be challenged? Well, probably, I mean, not that it's the best city in the world anymore, but it, uh, to me, it was at the time. Yeah. And um, I was like, I think I could be challenged in New York city. Like, why don't I go, you know, absolutely why don't I go see like how I stack up next to these, the big dogs down South. So, um, I had just determined, I was just like, I'm going to go challenge myself and that's it. I'm doing yeah. it. Like, I don't know why I just wanted to. Um, so I always tell people I applied to, I think 200 jobs before I got one. And people always say like, Oh, you know, Oh, it's so hard to get a job and or whatever. I'm like, yeah, it is. But if you apply to 200 jobs, one does eventually call you back if you yeah. want it badly. Well, um, and, and I think that goes back to the like the soccer and the practice and the doing the extra work. If like for me, if I, I, let's just say I'm not one for the extra work unless it's exciting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like when I was applying for jobs, it was maybe like 20 or 30 and it was on like Indeed and I didn't really want it that much anyways. And I was like, oh, this is impossible after like two, three hours. So yeah. 200 jobs, was it just any job? Was it restaurants? Was it, what was, I guess, um, what was the, the search? So I narrowed it down to, they were all like government, political related or PR, marketing, branding yeah. or event planning. Cause I'm like, I'm like a really weird planner person. Like I love to travel cause I love to travel plan. Like it's yeah. a weird thing of mine. So I was like, oh, I, I feel like I could love event planning. I mean, probably not now that I look back on it. <laughs> it but, was an option. Um, yeah, so one place finally called me back. I had also like not harassed. I messaged a lot of those managers on LinkedIn. So I think that's what helped. Cause I was like, all right, indeed isn't working. I got to make a personal connection yeah. to people. So, okay. So they hire me and I won't name the company, No worries. Um, but it was a PR firm in New York city and they service technology clients. So okay. in the description, it made it seem like I was going to be able to do some writing, which is important to me, like being able to do something creative. I was yeah. able to make social media posts and I was like, all right, this sounds cool. Mm. Um, the pay was absolutely terrible, but I didn't care. Like I was like, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to New York. Like I'm going to do this thing. Um, so I went down and four weeks later I quit because I have never felt more spiritually attacked in my entire life than I did at this job. Yeah. I felt like my soul was escaping my body. Like it, it was not good. So, so when you first started, was it, were you just pretty much another body that was going to be doing kind of what they wanted or were they allowing you to be creative or what was the feel when you got there? Another body. And they had completely lied in the description of the job and, um, Oops. Oops, and that was a little startling to me. Um, the people who worked there were very nasty human beings. Yeah. And they put me at a desk in a corner facing a wall. And nobody talked to me, nobody, you know, and it called me naive, I guess, coming from the farm, right? I'm like, hi, right. hi. And everyone's such an a-hole that I yeah. couldn't even believe it. And I remember, I like do not cry. And I was 
one day like at my computer and like tears just started coming out of my face onto my keyboard i'm like texting yeah. my mom the most dramatic things i was like i feel like i'm a caged fairy and they're plucking my wings off of me my mom was like are you okay like <laughs> what is going on here yeah, yeah and so the, what is what did they have you doing just writing i don't even me, they had me like organizing excel spreadsheets where if you kn know me i'm terrible at those things that, like that sounds very mundane and boring Tara, I'm, I'm, that has never been me and nor have I ever advertised. Like if you're someone who likes to write and yeah. give speeches and whatever, you're probably not also someone who likes to like organize numbers and names in an Excel file. It's just like yes. probably not what you, you want to do with your life. And I, I, I hated it. I hated it so much. And I was yeah. bad at it. I think that's also why I hated it. Cause they were having me do things I'm bad at. Right. Um, and nobody wants to do things they're bad at, you no. know, it's like nobody. So my self-esteem was like plummeting. Oh my God, it was so bad. And like the final straw was the holiday party. And mind you, I've only been there for four weeks. And I think one issue with this place is it was 90% women work there. There was no men. And I don't, I don't think that's good, a good thing. Uh, and what what was the vibe? It, it was very gossipy and nasty. Like, I mean, it, it was like a sorority. Like yeah. I, it was terrible. And I have no issues working with men or women, but I think it's, you know, a balanced workplace is probably healthier for everyone. Yeah. I had just come from a male dominated yeah. thing. So I was more used to working with men. So it's we actually really, really funny you say that because on the opposite, total opposite side of, the side of it, I worked construction for five years and that's also very gossipy. Because <laughs> it's all guys. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. I th I'm sure it is. I'm sure when it's all one sex, yeah. it's so good. So, um, yeah, no, and it was the final straw. We were all getting ready for this holiday party and my salary is $36,000 a year. And if you know New York city at all, that's unlivable basically. Yeah. Were you commuting or were you staying in somebody else's closet or how were you affording? I was staying in like a shitty, sorry, a crappy apartment. No, that's fine. You can start. Oh, okay. A shitty apartment in Brooklyn way out where it's not even safe it yeah. was none of it was glamorous at all trust me and we're, we're all getting ready for this holiday party and like it, I feel like I was like 12 again we like all go in the girls room and like everyone's putting their dress on and I put on a dress I thought was I liked I don't know I got it from forever 21 it was like 15 dollars because I had money yeah and I like walked out and one girl's like putting on her makeup and she was like oh where'd you get that dress from the local Goodwill and like they all started laughing and I was just like you know what F all of you, I am done here. And I just remember being like, okay, nope, I'm not doing this. I, and I remember thinking like, I have to have enough self-respect for myself to recognize that this is a toxic work environment yeah. and I need to go <laughs> quickly. Yeah. So um, that, that I went to the party, I had fun by myself because I was just determined to like drink their wine and then dip. <laughs> and that Monday, I was like, I cannot go back into this place. I can't even go in and look any of them in the face. Yeah. I sent an email to all of them, basically saying like, thank you for being the most unwelcoming people I've ever met in my entire life. I'm leaving all my things there. I literally cannot walk back into this building. Have a good mm. one. Yeah. And I was done. That was it. Goodbye. So then did we have 200 more uh, emails going out to, to find work or what, what was our next step there? No, so then I had a, a mini emotional breakdown of some kind, although I wouldn't even know if I would call it a breakdown because I felt so free Yeah. Um, that I went to three different museums that day in New York City, the free ones. Nice. And I, I walked in because art has always been very comforting to me. It's, oh, it's part of my family. I don't know, mm -hmm. just being around art makes me feel comfortable. So went into these museums, looked at all these art everywhere I went, went to the Native American Museum, went to a folk art. Like I, I just took it all in. And I told my mom, I quit my job. So she was aware and she was like, I'm not going to tell you what to do. Just like, let me know if you're like not doing well mentally or something. Yeah. No, I'm good. I'm good. And I went home that night and I sat on the edge of my bed and I opened up my laptop and I had, I had been very, very tiny amount freelancing on Fiverr at the time, proofreading just for $5 here and there. I didn't consider myself a freelancer and I, I didn't think anything. Yeah. It was like, a little app like little funny thing i was doing yeah. so and for those that don't know what fiverr is i don't know who does not but if they do not what <laughs> what what it what is fiverr 
Uh, Fiverr is a freelancing marketplace where you can get on there and hire people to do everything for you from design a logo to create your business plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there we go. So right. how did, how did you find Fiverr? Uh, my mom actually had suggested it to me a year earlier because I told her how bored I was at the job. And she was like, oh, my one friend, um, you know, he told me about this site where you can like edit papers and make five bucks or something. I don't know. You should yeah. check it out if you're bored. Cause I've always grown up in a, like, I don't want to hear the complaining type of household where like, oh, you're complaining, you're bored. Do something about it then. Like that's the. Yeah. Don't ever, don't ever complain about being bored. Cause there's, there's yeah. lots of options. <laughs> exactly. And that's what my mom, my mom was like, then do this. Like, I don't want to hear it. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay. And I got on there. I was making like 30 bucks a month. I, I thought it was cute. Like, yeah. I, you know, nothing of it. And so I went home the night after I quit. I, I sat there and I kind of had that like, well, here goes nothing mm -hmm. um, because I just quit <laughs> my job. Yeah. So why don't I open up this Fiverr platform and see like what the heck else it can do for me? I know how to write press releases. I know how to create press lists. So, um, so what is a press release, I guess? What, what, what would that kind of encompass? And then who does that get sent out to? Yeah, so a press release is basically like a nice little bundled package you send a journalist to alert them of something that has happened and then hope that they write about it. So Got it. For, yeah, okay, I'll leave it at that. Yeah, I don't need to go. Well, no, you can go, you can go in more. Like we get, we got well, time. It's boring. <laughs> it's boring. It's just like, oh, you know, if like a politician um, does like a, a ribbon cutting for a new business, you know, you write it and send it out to news channels and say, hey, I thought you might want to know so-and-so has you know, done this, you might want to cover it. Um, yeah. So I was like, yeah, I already know how to do that. Why don't I open this? You know, why don't I just see what happens? And mm -hmm. that, that was the start of everything. Yeah. That was the, the floodgates opened for the rest for of the sure. <laughs> So be before we get to the floodgates, um, what was it like living in a not so safe part of New York? Um, I didn't love it. My parents didn't love it. Um, I would use any excuse to go see anyone else I knew here to get out of that area. I only yeah. lasted six months there and then I moved. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was not into it. Um, as someone who grew up on a farm, I didn't love people like following me home from the subway. It wasn't, wasn't my cup of tea. That's not ideal. My friends who are from the, the tri-state area down here aren't phased mm. by any of that because they really. Up. They're, they're all like, oh, you're fine. You're going to be fine. I'm like, am I going to be fine though? Like, why is he following me? And they're like, yeah. you're fine. I'm like, I don't know if I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> He's making sure I get home safe. I'm sure. I'm sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> sure he is. Yeah. So what, was there any like gunshots? Was there any robberies? Like, it, or it was just the environment was like, eh. I mean, the envi environment was creepy. Nothing happened to me or my apartment, but I I heard gunshots. There were cops all the time. Apartments were set on fire all the time. Like it was just like not great. It wasn't great. Oh, that's that's not ideal. Apartments no. getting set on fire. <laughs> no, I, I didn't like it, and I don't know. I I know a lot of people. It's kind of this weird phenomenon. I know a lot of people that if they grew up super rich, um, they almost like living in these like weird hipster yeah. and then like I, I am a hipster myself so I'm not hating on the hipster side of yeah. them like they almost like to like flirt with danger I, I don't know because they're yeah. like so removed from it maybe I don't really get because they don't really know it <laughs> don't really know it so no. I'm like um you guys have fun with this I'm gonna go live where I'm not gonna get shot yeah so <laughs> so Fiverr opens when you make a uh press release account so you say what you're gonna do how much you charge? Like, what were you charging out of the gate? Was it ten dollars, fifteen dollars? Yeah, I think I think I did fifteen dollars for three hundred words, and then a bunch of add-ons. So I, I soon discovered I had like a knack for sales stuff. Yeah. Um, and the more I explained it to people, like, or my my mom would be like, "How did you know how to do all that?" I was like, "I don't know. I maybe listening to you." Yeah, so that's what I, I was gonna say. You had good role model there. Yeah, I mean, I, I would. I would have on my press release $15 for 300 words yeah. and then would have an, an extra, Hey, for $25, I'll mail your press release out. I'll email it out to people for another $10. I'll also write a blog for you. If you buy five, I'll give you the fifth one free. Like I started and like doing all this crazy pricing stuff yeah. and um, it worked, it worked. And I started opening more services. I opened blogs. I taught myself how to write website content. I taught myself everything. I became obsessed with Google and just learning. Yeah. I never even took an online course, not once. 
So what did what did your days look like? So day one or day at uh, night one, we're on Fiverr, we're opening this up. How quickly did this start taking off and how much of your time was spent um, doing all this? I mean, it started to get traction pretty quickly. I would say two months in, it was starting to get to the point where I was overwhelmed with how much work I had. Um, not a bad thing. Not a bad thing, no. Um, I, I would say that first year I worked way too much, but not, at the same time, I would never take that back. I think yeah. I need to do that. So um, I was doing 12 hours every day. Wow. Um, because I was, it was exciting. Like, oh my yeah. God, I'm boss. I'm only 23. People are paying me. I can make my rent. I can stay home. I can go for a walk if I want. Like, this is insane. Yeah. Like, like I was obsessed with it. I was upset. I yeah. loved it. Yeah. So did, did you have a lot of, um, uh, what, what were you doing when you weren't working? Did you have friends that were also doing the same thing? What was your environment around other than working? Yeah. Um, most of my friends were not entrepreneurs at the time. So that part was hard. I yeah. think, um, I definitely felt resentment from some people, um, that were, you know, like, cause I get to like frolic around. And right. do You're so lucky. You're so lucky, even though, you know, like nobody knows like what went into having, <laughs> yeah. um, Hey, tell them to listen to the podcast and they'll know. Yeah. Well, it's funny now because everyone is kind of becoming a digital nomad, whether they want to or not. So right. it's like same people now are kind of like, oh, do you have any tips for whatever? And I'm like, oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Yeah, um, if you? If you look at my Fiverr, these are my rates. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. I know. If you want to book a consultation, let me know. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I definitely felt very alone. I, I would say with all of it, um, nobody else was doing what I was doing. Yeah. Nobody else that I was with was doing what I was doing. Um, so I didn't really have anyone to like talk to about it. Um, I've since changed that. I know, yeah. you know, of course, naturally since then I've made sure to add like 50 amazing entrepreneurs to my friend circle now. And, and yeah. it took some time though to get to do yeah. that. Yeah. So, so how did you get a hold of them? Was that on uh, social media? Was it in New York? You guys just saw people working in their windows and like, Hey, <laughs> it actually has been entirely through social media. A lot okay. of people never even met in person. And it was yeah. actually fun. So a few weeks ago, I went to Florida and met like 10 people I do business with all the time. I had never met them in person. It was That's so awesome. funny because I've known these people for years through the yeah. computer. So it's like seeing them in person is like, it's like so funny this world we live in today like yeah it, it, i know here you are i know you so well yet i've never met you in person so it's like kind of awkward right um but no i've met all of these people through social media they we've all found each other from tiktok from articles from instagram mm -hmm. you know we've all kind of found each other yeah so how many um options or uh things can people have you do on fiverr like what's your have you made it small? Have you made it bigger? Like what's the options look like on there? Um, I think I have 13 active gigs. There's a lot of things you can get from me on Fiverr. Yeah. Um, I've, yeah, I mean, over the years, it's taken me, taken me years to learn all these different forms of writing. I mm. couldn't learn them all at once, but I mean, now today people can buy mini eBooks. They can buy blogs, product descriptions, editing. I'm here and happy to help you. Yeah. Um, like any smart business person, I do have individuals assisting me now. Um, mm -hmm. but I didn't for the first three years. So I'm always yeah. here, I mentioned that people are like, Oh, you, owe you outsource your rating. I'm like, first of all, no. And second of all, I, I, it was all me for even four years, I would say. Yeah. 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 But um, like a business person at some point you, you how dare how dare you yeah <laughs> um as far as uh health and nutrition goes what did that look like um while you're running your business and just trying to get everything under control yeah um i definitely over the past few years i've had to sacrifice my health a bit because i have not had a single second yeah to think about this at all mm -hmm. um and I finally this year have hit a point thanks to my team I'm building out where I finally can think about my health again and it's a very refreshing thing I allow myself to go to the gym every day again mm -hmm. I'm stretching you know I'm doing all this stuff but I mean I was having back problems because I was like crunched up on a couch typing all day because I didn't know I should have a desk yeah um I was just like buying sushi at the local market because I didn't want to cook 
um, yeah, it, it, it's been a journey, but I've obviously discovered, yeah. you know, I'm more productive. I'm, I'm have more clarity. I'm more creative. If I also invest in my oh, body. Yeah. Absolutely. So what, what did, um, meals, meal prep, meal planning, or any of that look like before you got to this point, like what, cause it, you say like, oh yeah, it was terrible. And I mean, it, it seems like you're doing fine, <laughs> but yeah. what, what, what did that look like before the last couple of years or whatnot? So I've always made an effort to be healthy for sure. So I, it, it was never like McDonald's or like Mac and cheese or anything. It was just definitely yeah. a lot, a lot of like Vietnamese soup and sushi and yeah. like all this pre-made stuff. Um, yeah. But I, I would try and cook every so often. Um, I try and have a healthy breakfast every day. I do yeah. oatmeal and peanut butter on it, like berries and stuff. I yeah. mean, I, I would make an effort to always eat healthy, but mm -hmm. I wasn't cooking as much as I probably should have. Been. Okay. So yeah, to, just to clarify, because most people when they're like, oh yeah, like I had no time or I wasn't doing anything and and, and then you're saying, oh, well, it was a healthy breakfast and then sushi and this stuff. Like, that's not outrageous no. <laughs> by any means. It's never, it's never been outrageous. No, I mean, yeah. I like... It wasn't college. No, no, <laughs> no, yeah. No, I, I made an effort after college when I was working in Albany, sitting at a cubicle all day, I started to gain weight slightly, ever so slightly. And I was okay. like, okay what's going on here and uh, when i came to new york i dropped it immediately because of the walking and everything right. but yeah. that was it that scare that little scare was enough for me to be like i need to actually care about what i'm shoving into my yeah. mouth so yeah. so what did that look like in albany in the cubicle was it like a week was it two weeks was it a month was it your clothes was it the mirror like what was that kind of where, where did that scare come from uh just the, the scale yeah yeah it was just watching it like creep yeah and i was like I don't like this because yeah. people are like, oh, when I go to college, I have the freshman 15. I'm like, I did not because I was running around like constantly. So right. yeah. I, I, that didn't happen to me. It started happening to me being sedentary and not moving. Yeah. Because I was so used to moving my whole life. So this yeah. whole move, not moving thing, I hated it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and, and I think a lot of people that be like, okay, like I'm going to work out one hour a day and then the other 16 or 15 other hours are sitting at a enough. desk. Yeah, it's not, it's not enough. And I've been allowing myself now uh, two hours at the gym because I'll do one full hour of just walking. So I'm a big believer in walking. That's great. I think, I think is much more important than people realize if you're not walking. Right. And the other hour also, you know, it's like I'm trying to really help my body out again here. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of people when they start working out, it's like, oh, I just want to lose weight and shortcut to kind of being healthy. But if you have those healthy habits in place, then you're it, then it's hard to not be healthy <laughs> but I, I think that. you definitely had the right the right mindset for sure yeah. um so what what is healthy eating now look like compared to what you were doing um like the sushi the vietnamese and um i would say i've i've upped it a teeny bit like i've recently made more of an effort to cut out dessert because i hmm. love sweets so i like if i don't you know, make an effort with that. It's not good. Yeah. Um, I've tried, I've been better. I cut out way more desserts now and I do try and cut back on the dairy when I can, cause I've seen all those scary documentaries that are just terrifying and I don't eat yeah. red meat. Yeah. Uh, I've also seen that Ooh. in those documentaries. Ooh, why not red meat? From these documentaries I've watched. It, it's like, people will say to me like, oh, well give me a steak. And I'm like, listen, I'm not like hating on the concept of steak. And I do love animals, but I do also understand like we need to get protein from them. Yeah. But it's these documentaries I've watched that tell you what is in the steak is freaking terrifying. So, so is this, is this game changers? Is this, who, who are we? Yeah. I don't even, I've watched like all of them. That's one of them. Like the, I don't even remember the title. I watched another one the other day that was just basically like directly linking all of the, these animal byproducts to cancer, to yeah. breast cancer, to hormonal changes in your body, mm -hmm. to be pre a precursor if you're going to have children one day, to like yeah. having issues in the children. And I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to work on a concept that doesn't take 10, 15 minutes to explain, but it's everybody makes a decision based off of the last 15, 20, 30 years of their life. So even if so, especially in politics, like if you give someone facts, they're going to determine their opinion based off of those like last 15, 20 or 30 years. Um, so what type of information would you need 
to hear to be like, oh, red meat isn't that bad. Would it be a uh, fact by fact, uh, fair fact checking of that um, uh, study? What, what, what do you think you would need to see to kind of switch your, your mind on that? I, I think my, I'm very like sour towards all of this because all these documentaries have shown they're all in bed with each of the, um, the brands that like the cancer society i'm like blanking on all their names yeah no for Um, sure they all pay each other so like seeing them all on each other's websites i hate so i think if there was like ever something that happened where it made it so that these nonprofits couldn't it's like the money thing that makes the most suspicious of it yeah yeah i don't like that and i also like am just convinced that like I don't know. They're just trying to feed us all crap for, I won't get into conspiracy theory, so I'll stop, but. <laughs> I agree. So, uh, so as in. I don't want to get shot. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you think the stuff that they're putting in the red meat is the negative stuff and their goal is to sell you beyond meat? Or what do you think like the, the goal of someone funding uh, red meat is bad? Like, what do you think their goal is? I mean, I think there's a lot of goals. I'm like afraid to say what I think some of them are, but I yeah. just, um, I don't love the hormones that are in the, the meat. I think the hormones are messing with both men and women. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, cause they've said there's a lot of estrogen in this meat. It's not the other one, it's estrogen. So yeah. it's like guys are eating estrogen. That's like just disgusting to me. And women are eating estrogen, which is also not good. You know, it's like, it's, it's, I, I just, I don't know what their goal is by feeding yeah. estrogen, but I think you can make, I don't know. I'm going to leave it there. You can maybe draw some conclusions. I think they're purposefully <laughs> yeah. feeding estrogen though. I am going to say that. Okay. Um, so as far as uh, like organic farming, like if all the animals are grass fed, grass finished, um, like local stuff, do you think that stuff is still poor or do you think, Hey, this is what our ancestors were eating and like, they were like, so like you said, hormonal levels from like testosterone levels from now compared to 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, they're astronomically different. So, um, yeah. So do you think that the natural farming or organic stuff, you'd be okay with that red meat or you think all red meat is kind of no, you know, I suspect? Be, I always say like when the day comes when I live in a house somewhere, I'm meeting all of the local farmers and like scheduling like drop-offs of all of their food because- right. I think if they're not, yeah, being injected with all this crap, I have Mm -hmm. no problem with it. However, I mean, there are some things beyond our control. Like they said, the soil we're we're using today, it has like 25%. And this is just talking about vegetables and stuff. We're we're only getting 25% of what our grandparents got 100% of nutritional value. So it's like, Mm -hmm. I I think we're, it's, there's only so much we can do, but I would absolutely buy from a local farmer who doesn't inject their animals psychotic hormones like yeah yeah, yeah. so it, it, it's not the uh red meat itself it is the process that it goes through yeah to no, get I'm to your like, table. yeah i don't think like oh red meat's going to kill me I, I i miss red meat but i mean they said red meat is like the worst offender of, with all the stuff that they're putting in it they, i yeah. mean it's chicken and stuff too but they were saying you know the red meat is like so bad yeah wonderful so glad i got that cleared up uh, I'm doing uh, carnivore at the point, so uh, I've just eaten meat for the last two weeks. Wait, really? <laughs> yeah. So oh, I've, I've, oh. Done, I've done this before. So the, the reason, um, long story short, I used to do a lot of diets because I'm like, hey, I want to look like I'm in good shape rather than just being like athletic. Um, so then like I would hire coaches and like they'd give me a plan be like, oh, this is going to take a couple of months. And like after a couple of weeks, I'm like, ah, no, this is boring. Um, so then I became a coach, figured out what's working and what's not. So I didn't really do diets, um, but people are still doing them. So now I will do them and explain to them like, Hey, yes, you can lose 10 pounds in a week, but for, since I'm just eating meat, like my glycogen is going away, which is a lot of water weight. So even though it shows I lost 10 pounds in the scale, it's maybe about three pounds of body fat, but I now more so do diets, um, just to show people. <laughs> so yeah, no, I mean, I think meat is, is very important yeah. for the male body. Like I think yeah. men need to eat meat, but they're being like poisoned by it today. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, and I would say definitely the levels, depending on where it comes from, can be great if you're getting Wagyu or if you're getting other things of that nature, like if we're getting from Tyson, eh, maybe not the best, um, but <laughs> yeah, for sure. 
Yeah, um, and, and the animal cruelty side of it too. Like, I mean, what oh, these companies, it, it's just, you know, I, I can't even watch the video. So yeah. like, it, that, it all goes hand in hand, yeah. For sure. Um, so as far as the uh, workouts and stuff go, do you have a plan? Do you follow somebody for that plan? Or where did you get that information from that has given you this decision? Um, so I'm lucky because my sister is an ASM certified personal trainer and nice. uh, nutrition coach. <laughs> so her, my sister, I'm very Hey, lucky. there you go. Yeah. So does she write out a plan for you? And then if she's writing out the plan, what's the goals that you're giving her that she's kind of writing for you? Um, I feel like, I mean, my goals are always just to stay lean. I, I'm never like, I, I like like carrying some muscle on my body. So yeah. it's, I, I like like lean, like I'm never trying to be like a little tiny stick, like frail girl with yeah. that. If you want to be that, that's fine. But um, I always just want to stay lean and, um, you know, filled with vitamins, minerals and strong. I want to, yeah. I like to be, I like to feel like if I had to, I could like get myself, like, get a boulder off of me or something. There you go. So yeah. do you do a lot of deadlifting, benching, or it's just pretty much she programs a lot of variety of stuff? For I you? do all of it. Yeah, I, I do all of it. I work out, try and work out every, you know, section of my body. Yeah. <laughs> today I did legs. Um, today I'll probably do like chest and back or something. Mm -hmm. um, every day, like I do a bunch of push-ups. Like I never want to be in a position where I can't do a push-up. Yeah. Like that just that would make me feel very like, I don't know. For sure. Yeah. So what does, um, I guess, so when did you get started in uh, TikTok, I guess? And, and what did you see from that? Uh, February, because of the impending pandemic, I knew I needed a new hobby and it ended up changing my entire life. And okay. um, amazing things have happened to me this year. I've met so many incredible people, podcasts, articles, business partnerships. I mean, it has just changed my life forever. Yeah. Forever, yeah. That's fantastic. Um, I, I had another question, but now I'm forgetting what it was <laughs> and now I'm trying to figure out what that question was. Um, but so going forward now, um, what, what's kind of your goals for the future? Like what are we staying in New York? Are we moving around? What, what does that look like for you? Um, I definitely want to leave New York at this point. It's, uh, makes me very sad to see the city that, you know, was in, integral in who I am today right. become what it's become it's kind of like torture to see it the way it is now mm. um it's become unsafe too uh, yeah. even Manhattan you know it's like it sucks I mean I'm so, only so what is what is unsafe mean um I mean I've there people are getting raped on the subway at like 66th and first and people are being followed the lower east side apartments are being broken into so, someone was like shot in like bryant park last week it's just like it's it's That's terrible not good. it's terrible i mean it's it sucks and i'm a small female i'm five three like i am tiny like i yeah I, it's scary to me and I don't think I should have to like be scared all the time and I'm also like kind of getting sick of the closet thing yeah um it's been you know five years of it now like yeah right. so yeah. what what would what's the uptick in crime obviously the pandemic but why do you think it's so rampant at the moment um oh you don't want me to dive into this topic but I think a lot of people don't fear retribution for their actions anymore from the law so okay it, I think they um, aren't scared to do what they're doing in Manhattan anymore because they know that the police don't really have any power to do anything about it. So um, I think there's a little element of fear always needs to be there. Right. Uh, keep bad people from doing bad things. And I don't think the bad people are scared at the moment. So how are they? Get, so the what are the police doing then? Um, I mean, they've, they are cutting their funding and... Yeah. I, I think everyone, and I'm not saying like everyone on every side today is afraid of being filmed doing the wrong thing, right. uh, no matter who you are, you know, it's like, if anything goes down, if you say one wrong thing or whatever, there's a video of it now. Mm -hmm. So I know if I was someone in charge of any of that, I would be afraid if I do the wrong thing, there's a video of it. Right. So, uh, I probably won't do anything now. Wow. I'm go to jail. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, I mean, there's, there's so many, there are so many sides to this, but the fact is crime yeah. is up, I think 300% over, which is a lot, 
Uh, yes, there's clearly an issue here. Yeah. And people are leaving New York City in droves. Many right. thousands of people are moving out of this place. So I'm not the only one who is a little afraid to be here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So w at what point did you decide, hey, like I'm out of here? Was that kind of coming or where, where did that kind of, when did that start? Um, I had kind of been feeling it in the last year because I had almost been starting to feel that plateau feeling again where I feel like I have done all that I need to do here. Kind yeah. of thing. Um, so I've been eyeing moving more south because I am tired of freezing to death all the time. <laughs> I was about to say how south? It sounds like you enjoyed Florida. Yes. Not uh, that far? We don't like hurricanes or... <laughs> I, yeah, the hurricane thing doesn't bother me. I mean, if I had a choice, I'm <laughs> obsessed with the desert. So I'm obsessed with the state of Arizona. I'm obsessed. Oh, with it. Yeah. Very it, nice. It brings me so much happiness. But um, I, I would like to move somewhere with no state income tax, I think. That would be nice. I'm kind of sick of paying tens of thousands of dollars, just knowing that I, I don't have to if I go somewhere. Right. Like, yeah. Why, why am I doing that then? Yeah. So For sure. uh, Texas, Florida. Yeah. Yeah, Texas, a lot of friends are moving there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so how many, uh, so you started off Fiverr and then you said you started getting into other businesses. Um, how many businesses are you a part of now? A few. And, and or run. A few, I have an app called iPop, which got um, shelved for a bit with COVID because it was okay. supposed to show people how to find trending um cafes and places that you can go take Instagram content at. So I have iPop, iPop's uh, halted for a bit right now. That's um, awesome. I run campfire trailers, it's called with my mom. I, I saw that one. Wait, so, yeah. the, so the iPop thing, how does that work? It's, just, it's a like trending photo map app. So you open it up and you see this big map of where you're standing and it shows you where you can go near you to get a perfect photo for your Instagram. So you could click on the pin and, and go, oh, okay, if I stand right here, I can get this photo with the Empire State Building. Yes, I want that for my grid. Um, you know, whatever. Happened to launch it at a bad time. I uh, launched it in February and here we are. So I have to kind of re revisit that one. Um, Super cool though. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it could have been. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> so uh, if you don't mind me asking, how long did it take and how expensive was that? Uh, expensive, more expensive than I thought it was going to be. Um, yeah. it took two years, two years and 20 to 30 K. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, there's still absolutely a use case for it. Oh, I've, for sure. kind of, I've just been kind of waiting to see, you know, like wh how all everything plays out with COVID, with politics, with everything. Yeah. I'm kind of waiting for like all of the dust to settle and like, just like see where that leaves the app. So I've been right. just kind of like, pausing that um yeah. this with my mom is taking off because we're making these mobile bars for people who are in dire need of them since they had to close their restaurant this year thanks to all the covid shutdown stuff yeah i was trying to think when you said mobile bars i was thinking what kind of bar <laughs> but that makes more sense yeah 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 no um so that's been taking off uh We've been, you know, like so happy about that. It's been great. Um, so, so you you are making the um, the whole construction of it. You're making like what what what's what is it? I see your website. What's the the service? Yeah. So my mom will work on finding these old horse trailers, and we have six different guys around the country who will go get them and yeah. then literally like redo them, like put it a new floor, cut out a serving window, make them all pretty. And then I step in as the marketer and I take the photos and the videos and everything of the trailers and make them look all beautiful for selling. And then my mom posts them on the internet and people are just desperate for it right now. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, no, we, it's been super fun. Um, yeah. And the fact that it's taking off right now, it's like a little, I'm like possibly, you know, thinking in the future of pivoting a little more to doing this stuff and not just being like the freelance writer girl all the time. Yeah. Um, Cause that's been fun for six years, but you know, classic entrepreneur, I get right. Bored. Yeah. Get bored. Um, so yeah, I do those two things. And then I just have a bunch of other stuff. I mean, I consider my TikTok a business. I'm in the creator fund. So I make money off of my TikToks. I have books. I have online courses I'm working on. I've it's just like, you know, it's just mayhem. <laughs> yeah. So how do you decide what you're going to do even for a day, a week, a month? Do you have a uh, manager or you're like, how do you pick what, what, what's going on? 
I don't know. I mean, I, I manage myself. I just like, I prioritize Fiverr because there's timers on all the orders. So everything up, like Fiverr comes first, making sure everyone's got everything they need. Like that's what comes first. And then I just allow myself to each day, like take it as it comes kind of. So, you know, like today I'm doing um, some private articles for my one friend who's been outsourcing them to me. So working on them, you know, today I happen to have this recording with you. So, okay, mm -hmm. that's going to happen today. Yeah. Um, and then if I don't have time, all right, I'll do the TikToks tomorrow. I kind of just like take it as it comes, but I feel like I can do that because I don't procrastinate. And I, yeah. I think if I procrastinated, I couldn't live like that. So whenever <laughs> I have, Whenever I have downtime, I like almost feel it's like a classic thing I need to work on, like guilty about it. And if I'm like, I should, if I'm relaxing, why am I relaxing right now? Yeah. Like, work that can be done. So I really am good at filling my day all day. Like I am not a procrastinator. So it, it just kind of like falls into place, I guess. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so what is something, I guess, in the future, you said you wanted to pivot to that kind of stuff. Is it more so just seeing what the uh society needs at that moment and you want to provide a service or what what did you mean by pivoting in that direction yeah i mean well it's like as this business takes off with my mom i mean if we get five ten fifteen more people countrywide who want to be involved with this you know i'd possibly step into a role of traveling every week to check in with the teams yeah. take photos um that would be amazing there's um a fun thing we have going on with it, I can't really say much about, but uh, a TV channel is interested in it, possibly. So that's on deck for next year. That's super uh, cool. Do yeah. they come to you or do you send them a, hey, this is what we got. Do you pitch them or how does how do they find you? They found me on TikTok and they actually were interested in talking to me about other things. Yeah. And I pitched them on the phone about my family business I thought they should know about, not thinking it would go anywhere. And here yeah. we are. So crazy um i want to write my own book finally that's about everything my life um, yeah that's on deck you know i mean uh, i always have five thousand things i want to do <laughs> that's fantastic yeah. um so yeah is there anything else so if anybody was to uh come here from the podcast how would they find you on your platforms i would say the best places to follow me on social media just to like contact me or see what i'm up to is TikTok and instagram um, so my TikTok is Alex Fasulo Biz, B I Z, and then my Instagram is my full name Alexandra Fasulo, and um, I'm on both of those. Actually, today's Tuesday, so at 6 p.m. I have my little show on Instagram. I call it the Freelance Fairy Tales. Wonderful. <laughs> it's cute. Um, so people can catch me every every Tuesday at six, and I answer every everyone's questions. They write in. It's always pretty entertaining. Um, I answer DMs. I'm here to help people. So say mm. hi yeah that's fantastic so yeah to, to finish it up uh what is your definition of health not the definary definary uh definition not the dictionary definition but what is something that you strive for as far as health like what, what are you looking at oh interesting i guess i would say health is like a state when like your mind and body like and soul are all good mm -hmm. right so i i would i think health and bodies your mental your physical and your spiritual. And I think a lot of people our age have really uh, big issues with the spiritual side. And I think that that's what's manifesting bad health in other ways and everything. So mm -hmm. I think I think health is equilibrium with your mind, body, and soul. I don't know, that just sounded really- yeah. like, no, I like it. <laughs> really intense right now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I like it. Uh, and then the last thing is, what's something from your life that somebody listening to the podcast could kind of take away uh, that should kind of help or benefit their life? Um, I would just say I am just a girl who grew up in a farm uh, outside of Albany, New York. I don't, I, I wasn't handed $10 million to get started doing what I'm doing. So if I can mm -hmm. do it, you absolutely can too. And the only difference between me and you is our mindsets and anyone can change their mindset if they want to. Ooh, love it. Well, thank you very much for coming <laughs> on the podcast. Yes, thanks for having me. And there's that. That was phenomenal. <laughs> Woo, that was thank long. You. Yeah, yeah. So and I people try to say, like, oh, you're trying to be like Joe Rogan. I'm like, I don't talk enough <laughs> for it to be Joe Rogan, but I do I, I do enjoy the the long form. Uh no, I think I mean that the questions you were asking me are much different than the questions other people ask me. And I think your questions are actually more important because you're getting to the root of like what makes me me 
Right. And, and, and that's like my biggest discover, my, my biggest thing is when I work with people or just meet people, I'm less interested in the decisions they make and more on why they make them. Um, yeah. just but that's, be, that's it. That's yeah. the answer. Yeah. 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 So no, I, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> no, you're right. Like, and I, I think cause when people want the quick, all right, how do I make five bucks? How do I make this? How do I make that? I'm like, I can right. tell you all that, but none of that will matter unless you address what's actually the matter here. Right. Like, you and, know, yeah. And like we could have started off with, oh, you started Fiverr and you just started making a bunch of money and my life changed. Or we could have done the first 40 minutes to figure out how you got there. No, so it was it was and it was fun to do too. It was like, <laughs> like <glad>. fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, so yeah, I will uh, get that out. I'll get it edited. Um, and then I'll send, send you, yeah. yeah, send me all the stuff. Cause I, I, yeah, post absolutely. All of, yeah, yeah. Wonderful. And you're out, you're, you have the same name as me, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> you go by Alex too. Uh, I go by Alexander, uh, just okay. because, uh, if my mother is around, um, she'll make sure that it's Alexander. Okay. All <laughs> right. I didn't know. I was like, is this two Alex's here, but, um, all right. Yeah. yeah. Alexander, send yeah. me the stuff. And, we'll do. Um, yeah. All right. So, wonderful. I enjoyed it. Oh, me too. All right. Have a great day. All right. You too. Talk to Bye. you soon. <laughs>